Hi everyone, it's Tony back again with another video. Today I'm going to talk about the fourth book in the Lunar Chronicles called Winter by Marissa Mayer. Now, Winter is a retelling of Snow White. Now, in this book, we go through an adventure discovering that Winter is effectively a princess on Luna that has um, been abused by Queen Levana. And we discover who she is, how she's integral to um, Cinder's storyline and Scarlet and Crest. And it basically brings all the other three books into a conclusion. So I'm going to read you, as per usual, a bit of the plot. And then I'll let you know three things that I liked about the book. If there was anything that I disliked about the book. And who my favourite characters in this book were. So here we go. Princess Winter is admired by the Lunar people for her grace and kindness. And despite the scars that mark her face, her beauty is said to be even more breathtaking than Queen Levana's. Winter despises her stepmother and knows that Levana will not approve of her feelings for her childhood sweetheart and palace guard, Jason. But Winter isn't as weak as Levana believes. She has been undermining her stepmother's wishes for years. Together with the cyborg mechanic Cinder and her allies, Winter might even have the power to launch a revolution and win a war that has been raging for far too long. Can Winter, Scarlet, Cress and Cinder defeat Levana and find their happily ever afters? So in this book, we basically get reintroduced to all the previous characters and in this book, Cinder is basically trying to overthrow Lavana's rule of the lunar people. So we, so she heads back to, so she heads back to Luna to confront Lavana at her wedding with Emperor Kai, and discovers that um, she's not only controlling Kai, she's controlling the lunar people, and there's this basically. And there's this struggle that ensues between Cinder and Levana to regain control of the Lunar People. So Cinder's trying to break, break Levana's control of the Lunar People and get give them their freedom and basically show the Lunar People who Levana really is. And she's not this beautiful queen that she, they think she is. And the fact is that she's placed a glamour over herself to make herself a bit, appear to be more beautiful, more gracious, and um, more powerful than she actually is. We also learn a lot about Winter, the fact that um, even though Winter is meant to have um, this lunar sickness because she refuses to use her powers um, of mind control, um, that she does, she's not as weak as Lavana thinks she is. I mean, I know it says that in the, um, in the small plot excerpt that I've read out to you guys, but basically, um, Winter is, it was in effect exaggerating the extent to which she was losing her mind because she wasn't using her powers. So yes, it was affecting her, the fact that she wasn't using her powers, but not to the extent that Lavana thought. Lavana thought that she just basically was this simpleton and this childlike um, entity that didn't really quite understand or grasp what was going on and um, could very much be controlled by her or, Lavana was more in, inclined to let some of the things that Winter did go because she was just like there was no point because Winter doesn't really get what she was doing anyway. But in actuality, we learned that Winter was like some kind of master manipulator when it came to leveraging her illness um, to get what she wanted from Lavana. So I thought that was quite an interesting development in this book. Um, I really did enjoy winter as a character i thought that she was so likable i like the fact that um the description of winter i really saw myself um, in winter because you know she i she, i just thought she would look somewhat like me but maybe like this instead of like my giant black afro she had like a giant white afro or instead or something like that um and she's meant to be this really, really beautiful princess despite her scarring and um, didn't really think that her looks was what she was leveraging. It was more her humanity and her compassion for other living beings um, that made her quite endearing. Um, I also like the fact that she didn't um, 
even though she had a legitimate claim to the royal throne um, because her father um, was like the rightful heir of um, Luna. Which actually makes me wonder, a sin a winter and cinder actually sisters or cousins something like that there's something there's some kind of relationship between winter and cinder um blood relationship so um she could rightfully claim heir to the throne but she doesn't that's not what interests winter winter's just about jason being fine and scarlet being fine and her wolf creature being fine and all you know just all the the people and creatures that she cares about being fine that's what winter wants out of life which i thought was really really loving and endearing um so but i did think that that was a dynamic that could have been explored a little bit better her legitimacy to the throne and um kind of debating that with cinder a bit more because even though cinder um we 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 discover in this book is trying to stake her claim on the throne for luna um you know did winter also have a legitimate claim and because winter was actually quite loved by the lunar people i mean could she be her potentially have been a worthy opponent um so i thought that could have been explored a bit better i feel like i'm kind of jumping around a little bit in this um review um saying what i thought could have been done better before i tell you what i really like so i do apologize for that but it's just the way my thoughts are aligned for some reason um so what did I like about this book? I like the fact that it was absolutely action packed. Um, you got to learn more about Wolf and um, the kind of mutant hybrid warrior soldiers that were being created and um, their environment and their motivations and so on and so forth. I really enjoyed that part about the book. I also enjoyed the fact that there was a real kind of battle that went on between Levana and Cinder for um for power over Luna and I also thought that Aiko really really came into her own in this book I mean I kind of felt almost like Aiko was the heroine of the day in this book I mean I know that yes it was about Cinder and you know and it brought Scarlet out and it brought um and Cress had a, a big part to play as well. And like the three, you, you essentially got like the three or four heroines, um, Cinder, Cress, Scarlet and Winter working together to overthrow Levana and um, bring peace to Luna and bring a peaceful relationship between Luna and Earth. But I felt like the star or the main heroine of the show to speak for me was Aiko. And um, it was done in such a funny, such an endearing, such a classic way that I really, really enjoyed her character in this book for a change. Not for a change, but I really, I, I just thought she really, really came out very strongly in this book. Um, also, I felt Wolf came out really strongly and that um, angst and internal dialogue that I described in my review of Scarlet, that... Um, conflict that he is experiencing within himself kind of you know being under control and wanting to do the right thing by scarlet that really really was played out very very well in this book now in terms of things i didn't like now there was a bit where they had to go to um luna and you know basically um sort of infiltrate the the, the wolf warriors let's just call them and i just felt like that bit just dragged on it went on and on and on. It was meant to be like this action pack bit. And for me, I just felt like it, it just went on too, too long for me personally. And that was one of the things that I didn't enjoy so much in this book is that I felt that because it was trying to reach a conclusion and tie all the stories together. And it, even though it did do it really well, it was done in a very lengthy arduous kind of way a little bit to me so that led me to i had to fast read through some parts of the book and i and i seldom have to do that i only have to do that ever do that when it's dragging on a little bit and so i kind of felt that in winter um which kind of made me sad because i kind of was really excited to read it especially after the 
you know, reading Cinder, um, Scarlet and Crest back to back and I just kind of thought, oh, I'd plow through and, and get a lot of meat and the bones in winter. And I, and I just felt like it was just too, it's just a little bit too long for my taste. Um, I don't know why I felt like that because it was action packed. It was full of suspense. It was, it, it, it the, the, I, I get where the momentum was trying to go, but for me, it was a bit like the little engine that could and could and was trying and trying and trying and got there in the end, but you know, literally dragged its way into the docking station kind of thing. I don't know. Um, my analogy is a bit kind of whack, but it was just long. Um, and I wish I didn't feel that way, but it was. Who are my favorite characters? Um, I really liked Winter. I loved Ico. Um, Car um, Carswell Thorne was, again, didn't disappoint. He was as funny as ever. Um, there was a scene in the book where he was basically under mind control, but kind of semi under mind control was like, injuring everybody and apologizing at the same time it was it was written in such a funny way that I was laughing out loud um throughout that bit even though it was a bit gruesome a bit dark um i just found it funny for some strange reason because carswell thorn is just a funny guy so um i really enjoyed those elements of it um but unfortunately i'm gonna have to give this one a three out of five because it was my least favorite of all of the books but it was still really really worth a read um i would really encourage you to read it because it really did bring everything from um the previous three books together and i guess maybe that why that's why it's probably why i find it so long and so arduous is because it was trying to tie up all the loose ends and for me it just kind of felt flat a little bit it could have been like some 300 pages less so i hope this doesn't discourage you from reading it i mean it still got a three out of five it was a good read um it was it it, it, it was a nice conclusion there was a happily ever after kind of feeling and um i like the fact that you had to fight for the happily ever after in this book um but i just wish it was just a little bit shorter but that's just my personal taste um so i hope you find this video helpful this review helpful um please let me know your thoughts and let's have a dialogue in the just in the comment section um what did you like who was your favorite character did you love carswell thorn as much as i did did you like winter did you feel that she was a little bit too ditzy or did you think that there was some kind of mad genius method behind her madness so to speak um, did you like cinder and how she developed in this book did you like um jason's character i kind of felt like he was the weakest link to be honest i mean i don't i just i just didn't dig him i didn't i just didn't i'm sorry just didn't um did you like wolf as much as i did scarlet you know did you what did you think of scarlet in this book i kind of felt like after her initial book um her where she was the the star um scarlet and um her role in crest i kind of felt like she kind of fell off a little bit in this one i mean she was still quite integral but i just didn't really her character kind of just dovetailed a little bit for me in this book i don't know why but that's just that's just how I feel um, but do put your comments down below let's have a dialogue I'd love to hear your thoughts please like share and subscribe and until next time bye